Hello everyone, welcome to Bit of Anatomy. In this histology tutorial, we will see the features of peripheral nerves. So in the previous tutorials, we saw the features of the nervous tissue. If you are not seeing that, just click the link in the link that is appearing on your screen now. So peripheral nerves, they are nothing but the nerve fibers which are present in the peripheral nervous system. So what do you mean by nerve fibers? Nerve fibers are nothing but either the axons or the dendrites. That means the nerve fibers are the processes of the neuron. So for example, while dissecting, you might have been seen the ulnar nerve, the sciatic nerve. So these are the examples for the peripheral nerves. So that means whatever nerves that you see in the peripheral part of the body, in the peripheral nervous system, they are called as peripheral nerves. So in histology, we see the transverse section of the nerve and also longitudinal section of the peripheral nerves. So in many colleges, the transverse section of the myelinated nerve, so a special strain is used to see this, which is called as osmic acid. This osmic acid strain, it specifically stains the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath takes up either brownish to black color Whereas the axoplasm and the surrounding connective tissue, it takes up somewhat lighter yellow color. So in the transfer section, if you appreciate, we can see each individual axon which is surrounded by myelin sheath. As described, it takes a black to brown color. So in the central part, there will be lightish yellow color or orange colored axoplasm. Surrounding each axon, there will be small amount of connective tissue that is called as endoneurium so there will be bundles of uh, axons each bundle is surrounded by a slightly thicker amount of the connective tissue which is called as perineurium so in all now there will be numerous bundles of nerve fibers like this so each bundle surrounded by the perineurium each axon surrounded by the endoneurium and the entire nerve is surrounded by a thick coat of the connective tissue which is called as epineurium so this endoperi and epineurium, they are nothing but the connective tissue coverings. So which binds the axons together and also it acts as a passageway or the pathway for the passage of blood vessels and the lymphatics. So in some colleges, we can also see the h and stained slides where the myelin sheath is not properly stained, but still we can appreciate it. Uh, taking up the eosin stain. So similarly we see the epineurium layer and within the epineurium we can see nerve fasciculus covered by perineurium. Inside that we can see the axons with myelin sheath. Each of the axon is surrounded by a small amount of the endoneurium and we can also appreciate the axoplasm. So we can see the epineurium the perineurium, endoneurium around the each individual axon, the outer myelin sheath and the axoplasm. So in some axons we can appreciate a nucleus in the around the outer part of the myelin sheath. So it will be nucleus of the Schwann cell which forms the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. So when we see longitudinal section of the peripheral nerve, we see longitudinally running axons with axoplasm surrounded by the myelin sheath. And within the myelin sheath, we can appreciate a small gap within the myelin sheath. So each axon is surrounded by the connective tissue. We can appreciate the myelin sheath, the axoplasm, the gaps called as node of Ranvier, and endoneurium surrounding each individual muscle, sorry, each individual axon. So till now we appreciated the myelin sheath that is present around the axons or the dendrites or the, in general the peripheral nerves. So now we will see what is this myelin sheath. So this myelin sheath, it is actually an alternate layers of lipids and proteins which surrounds the peripheral nerves. It forms around the nerves fibers of certain diameter which has got a larger diameter the smaller ones are not covered the larger ones are covered 
So the myelin sheath is formed by Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system, whereas in the central nervous system, it is formed by the oligodendrocyte. So these are the two cells which forms the myelin sheath around the nerve fibers. Remember, it is not present only around the axons, it is also present around larger dendrites that are present in the peripheral nervous system. If you see the process of formation of the myelin sheath, each axon is surrounded by a Schwann cell and the point where the cell membrane of the Schwann cell meet, it is called as mesoaxon. And as the myelination process continues, the cell membrane of the Schwann cell, it starts to overlap each other in circular fashion. And finally, we can see that the cell membrane of the Schwann cell, it surrounds the axon in multiple form and the nucleus of the Schwann cell is present or is pushed towards the outer aspect. So as we can see here, the entire myelin sheath is formed by the cell membrane overlapping layers of cell membrane of the Schwann cell. If you remember, the cell membrane itself is formed by lipids and proteins. That's why the myelin sheath is a, is a layer which contains alternate layers of lipids and the proteins. And in the peripheral part, the nucleus of Schwann cell is present with a small amount of cytoplasm. This is called as neurilemma. So which helps in the repair of the damaged nerve fibers. So as I said, the myelin sheath is nothing but cell membrane of the Schwann cell. So in the peripheral nervous system, one Schwann cell, it forms only one myelin sheath. So it forms just one myelin sheath with a small amount of neurilemma, which is present in the PNS. So in the central nervous system, the oligodendrocyte forms the myelin sheath, but it forms multiple myelin sheaths, either around a single axon or around different axons. So this is how the oligodendrocyte and the myelin sheath is related. So it gives numerous branches which forms myelin sheath around different axons. So and neurilemma is absent in the CNS which indicates that if there is any damage to the nerve fibers within the CNS then the repair doesn't take place because of the absence of neurilemma. And there are some areas where myelin sheath is absent. One of the areas is node of Ranvier which helps in saltate reconduction. Then it is absent in the initial segment where the axon begins from the cell body. So we see the functions of the myelin sheath. So it covers the entire uh, axon of the nerve fiber. It acts as an insulator. And the it increases the velocity of the impulse. So by a process called as saltate reconduction. So that means the nerve impulse travels at a faster rate in myelinated axon when compared to the non unmyelinated axon and it imparts white color to the entire nerve and the neurilemma that is present in the PNS as I said it helps in the repair of the damaged nerve fibers. Remember if the nerve fiber is damaged to a larger extent the repair doesn't occur so a smaller injury can be repaired by the neurilemma. So and if you see the relation of unmyelinated nerve fibers and the Schwann cell so even the unmyelinated axons are also covered by the, are also related to the Schwann cell. But the relation is somewhat different and there is no formation of the myelin sheath that is multiple layers of the cell membrane. So one Schwann cell is related to many axons and we can see from the diagram there is no formation of the myelin sheath around the axon. They are just related where the Schwann cell which is a neuroglial cell which supports the axon. So these are the features of histology of the peripheral nerve and process of myelination. Do subscribe for future updates. Thank you.